Why did they make a poop emoji? It's chocolate What's that pudding. Mean? Is it chocolate pudding or is it poop, Greg? No, That's it's an obviously poop, but it's a smiling poop. So it's On like, a, two times in a row, he said obviously instead obviously. of obviously. It is not No, obviously. obviously. That's how it's pronounced, Matt. It's obvious, obviously. <laughs> but what is the poop emoji for? I've, I've actually sent that to friends and said, like, I'm not even sure what this means. Welcome to another episode of the Law Offices of Quibble, Squabble, and Bicker on this October 12th, 2022. And we have an incredibly special guest for us today. Her name is Jeremy Rain. I don't know if you go by Jeremy Rain Dreyfus or Jeremy Rain. She's former wife of uh, Richard Dreyfus, the noted Hollywood actor. And um, she may or may not be sticking around later on to help us discuss or deal with our client. Life is horror and you are horrible. That is our client for today. Behold, trapped in a hellscape of their own invention, socially unaware old white men bound by the pretense of being fake lawyers yet knowing no law, no exquisite Latin terminology, they are inexplicably compelled to quibble over minutia, squabble over triflings and bicker like those who value their backyards far too highly without even knowing the difference between an easement and an alleyway. At this very moment, you have entered the heart of the law offices of quibble, squabble and bicker. Let's get started. Well, Now You're Dead is a unique brand of hot sauce and hot sauce related products that are sure to set your internal organs literally on fire. No, this is no exaggeration. The good folks at, well, Now You're Dead Compound just outside of Tucson, Arizona have a special blend of ghost, demon, and Republican fundraiser peppers with some of the same compounds used in Agent Orange and Diet Sprite to create hot sauce so hot and combustible that upon ingestion, you will literally burn from the inside out. The, well, now you're dead challenge has gone viral with many TikTok influencers attempting it and well, you know, fucking dying because well, now you're dead takes its brand promise pretty goddamn seriously. So got a cell phone, desire to go out in a TikTok firestorm of subs and likes and basically have a death wish? Perfect. Pick up a bottle of, well, now you're dead hot sauce at your local farmer's market. You will know it's them by the sparkly jumpsuits and bike helmets every disciple, I mean employee, wears. While you're up the stall, toss a fiber in the hat for the great Maharaji Pizistic, the founder and creator of, well, now you're dead hot sauce. Well, now you're dead hot sauce. Don't say we didn't tell you. Well, that was inspired. Brandon. You know what I love is I had bad hearing and the first two times you said it, I thought you were saying, now I'm gay. Hot sauce. I did too. That's I what like, I thought what? it was. No, you did now too. I'm, so I'm not crazy. And I was like, oh, what? It inflames your prostate gland or something? It's like, oh. I think you're stereotyping. I think you're projecting on me something that I didn't ask. I just ask heard that. I'm sorry. I, I literally sound like you're saying This is coming from the man that's wearing no shirt. I heard now you're dead hot sauce, and I wasn't even paying attention. Well, good for so. you. I'm bad hearing. I've lost my I was. Brain. I was dealing with uh, our people on TikTok who, once again, are wondering who am I and why am I talking to them and not hearing anything else. Anyway, let's let's talk to our guest. Thank you so much for being here with us, Jeremy. I really appreciate it, and uh, welcome to what is our little corner of insanity on the internet. So, you know, you are probably, I, I guess, your fame comes from having been in the horror classic, The Last House on the Left from 1972, which is Wes Craven's first film. The Last House on the Left. However, you've obviously lived a much fuller life outside of one film from back in the early days. And um, I, actually, my one of my biggest questions is, um, how did you parlay that into marrying Richard Dreyfus, which was about ten years later? I don't know um, if she parlayed it, Matt. Like it was a scheme. You make it sound like she was like, "Ooh, I'm going to get a role in this film so I can marry Richard." There's Dreyfus. actually a weird story how I. Uh, well, I'm sure it. there's some way. So I'll, I'll let her talk. So here we go. All right, I was living with John Savage, the actor. Oh, okay. And he oh, was doing Deer Hunter, and we wanted to move from New York to LA and his manager was in Italy and the house was empty. Rudy out to belly. So we moved to the house in, in Benedict Canyon. And three months after living there, I told John, oh my God, 
I love this house. We live in the greatest house in all of Beverly Hills. And he said, I have to tell you something about our house. Sharon Tate was murdered in our house. So that at the house freaked me out completely. I had played Susan Atkins in the play in New York for a year, Killing Sharon Tate. What what I the play was met, called Killing Sharon Tate? It was called Twenty One Years Twenty One Years the Rockumentary about Charles Manson. Oh, okay. And that's how I got Last House on the Left. But before that, I hitchhiked when I was twenty years old and Manson and Tex Watson picked me up. Wait, ride. wait, 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 hold on a second. So, <laughs> so you're just wandering the streets of the early 70s and yes. Charles Manson and Tex Watson I hitchhiked. are the I ones walked. who happened to pick you up. <laughs> they picked me up as a hitchhiker. Was this before or after? Well, it must have been obviously long before you played the role the in uh, the play, <laughs> right. though. Two, wait a minute, hold well, on. It was two months before the murder. So, so they were, they, this scheme was brewing already. Yes, this up. scheme was brewing. I met right. them. They were brewing, I guess. Why didn't you brewing talk them out of it? it? You should have talked them out of it. She didn't I, know. I that. got more trouble. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're just like randomly <laughs> telling their schemes to hitchhikers. <laughs> this kidding. isn't a bad James Bond movie where they're like, oh, we picked up this girl. Now, this is the plan, young lady. We're going to, <laughs> we're, we're going to find a pregnant actress. And her Killer. pedophile husband, and oh, we're gonna. Jeremy, can I ask you? Did you find Charles Manson likable? Like, yes. He... No, yeah, he was like. Terrible. A... I, I was only in. I was staying with my great aunt in Hollywood, and she was deaf and and uh, wouldn't let me in. Didn't give me a key, and I decided I should walk and see, you know, California. So I walked way down Sunset Boulevard. My feet hurt. I wanted to hitchhike home, and I saw two guys hitchhiking. I thought, oh look. No one's picking them up if I stand in front of them, because I was a hot hippie at the time. And uh, I still stuck a my... hot hippie, Jeremy. <laughs> Seventy-four. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Charles Manson pulled over. Tex Watson was driving, and they gave all three of us a ride. And I thought they were nice guys, and I told them they could take the guys where they were going first before they took me to my great aunt's. And a few weeks later, they showed up at my great aunt's looking for me the night before the murders. What? Thank God, I was back in West Virginia, and my great aunt called my grandfather and said, these crazy people came looking for your daughter, uh, your granddaughter. And um, The day before? Yeah. yeah. Well, oh, my. Well, I didn't know that they were related to the murders, but I remember seeing the murders were all over the papers. And... Um, and then you saw their pictures and you went, oh, those guys. <laughs> yeah, I knew them and I thought they were nice. They played well, the guitar. I want to know about me. that moment where you're like, suddenly you open the paper and you're like, whoa, wait a minute. That guy gave me a ride. <laughs> I know that guy. <laughs> well, Charles Manson was from Charleston, West Virginia. So we had that in common. He was from Sissonville. So we talked oh. about West Virginia. Oh. Um, I did not pick up that they were. Really How long was this drive that you were in with them? Um, from where you got picked up to when you finally were taken Probably let, about let go. 20 minutes but then we sat out in the parking lot where my great aunt lived and they played guitars for me and talked to me so and you were like serenaded by charles manson and tex <laughs> what well i mean were they they must have been very charismatic because otherwise yeah, they couldn't they have really good. created the the yeah. organization that they created the small I, organization i couldn't have done that <laughs> I mean, he seduced the guy from the Beach Boys. I mean, he was very charismatic. Yeah, they liked him. Rudy yeah. out to Belly, when he heard about the murders at his house, the first thing he thought of was Charles Manson. He was in Italy when he got the call. Now, why did he think of Charles Manson? Did he know him? Because he knew him. See, Charlie had been hanging out at that house. Uh -huh. uh, he wanted to be a musician, and he was mad at Doris Day's son, who was supposed to help him. Melcher, what, what was his Wait, name? Is, I, I, I kind of want to think that Doris Day's son is Morris Knight, but Morris Melcher, Knight. Terry Melcher. Okay. Terry and they Melcher. actually went there to get Terry Melcher, not oh. to get Sharon Tate. Oh, she just was in the way. So, yeah, Terry Melcher just... is Doris Day's son. Yes. Oh, okay. Who stiffed him on the record deal? Right. <laughs> wow. Hey, you know. What's you never know what's going to yeah. cause somebody to go over the deep end. I think one of the Wilson brothers from the Beach Boys. Oh, sorry. 
He recorded one of Charles Manson's songs, even. Like, he was a songwriter. Exactly. Charles Manson might have been on the monkeys. He auditioned for the monkeys. <laughs> Imagine that. Things yeah, are anyway. very different. Well, they would have more of the uh, band members alive now if that had been the case. You think or dead? Man, <laughs> no, <who knows? laughs> he would have killed all of his. It would have been dead band monkeys, band. is what you're saying? Dead monkeys, yeah. I'm just trying to. I'm just anyway, trying to imagine. Charlie John Savage doing... always told me that he taught Richard everything he knew about acting, and that he knew Richard. They were best friends. Mm. And John and I were engaged, and he told me that Richard was going to be our best man. So, we're with his manager at a Japanese restaurant with Valerie Harper, and suddenly Richard walks in. He just won the Academy Award, and he walks straight towards me, and he says, "Hi, I'm Richard Dreyfus," and then he says to John. I saw you in American Buffalo on Broadway, and I think you're wonderful. John started sliding under the table. I grabbed his arm, and he goes, uh, uh, I think you're great, and then he went back under the table. So Richard <laughs> didn't know what to do, but walk away. And then I dragged John up and said, why did you do that? And he said, it was Marlon Brando speaking to an extra. So... Years later, when John, when, when Richard walked into a party alone, I had to go tell him what that line was. And from there, we got engaged immediately. <laughs> he, sa he said, what do you want to do with your career at CBS? I said, nothing. I want to get married and have kids. He goes, me too. Let's get married. So I went and told my date, I'm going to marry Richard Dreyfus. He said, you're insane. We're leaving. I sneak <laughs> my number to Richard. And we were engaged the following Thursday. Wait, you mean you told John Savage? Well, John was gone by then. Okay. John was no longer in the picture. Okay, so you met Richard in 78. You get married, what, 83 it yeah. was? Okay. Now, I, so my curiosity comes from, so you did Last House on the Left, and I believe another movie, The Abductors, in like 72. <laughs> and no, between... Preacher, preacher Man meets Widow. Hey, hey Widow I had a woman. good part in that. I was a good I girl in that I want to see that movie one. just because of the title. I, I saw that in your... Uh, did you actually see it? No, I've never heard of it. I, I love oh. exploitation films from the early seventies, and that sounds I had a so great interesting. Outtake from it, but somebody lost it. Oh, I didn't what? have a big movie career, and then when I married Richard, he did have a big movie career. So it's like let's just have one actor in the family. Yeah, it yeah. didn't really get a lot bigger than that when getting with Richard Dreyfus at the, that stage of his career, anyway. Right, um, but. I'm still like, I have this question mark between 72 and 78. So 72 is when these movies were done. And I think the doctors, the soap opera you were on. And right. then 78 is when you met him. But in between there, you stopped acting. What were you doing in that six to eight year period I after getting out of the... as a PA at NBC okay. in New York. And I didn't even know what that meant. That's a public assistant. attorney, I think, isn't it? <laughs> public attorney, yeah, yeah. That was a lawyer. You're another fake attorney like we are. Well, that's a DA. I... I know, I know what it means, Greg. Weeks. It's production assistant, but anyway, we're right. okay. we're just and playing just games. Loved, I loved that job. I loved working. I was terrible at typing. They told me to please act like I dropped a pencil if anybody walked by because I was pecking. But I worked really, really hard as a PA, and I worked my way up to a writer producer. And then I went when John and I moved to Burbank to LA. I got a job at NBC and Burbank in advertising. And then I quit that job to go be on a location with him. And then I went to work at CBS as a writer. Well, what record producing did you do? Who, who did you all produce? All the commercials, all those 10, 20, oh. 30 second spots for the shows. Oh, okay. So you were famous in your own lane, really? I just worked hard. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah. I guess. Copywriting for that kind of stuff as a as a copywriter myself, that's an underappreciated skill. It's, it is. It is. It's good work. People don't know it's how to do it. Good work. It kept me busy. Yeah. Did you get a Clio? Trouble? No, no oh. Clio. That's sad. Uh, I think my son got an award for something. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know the the positive thing about you being on our show today is that. Every year we have a, an annual award show, and you will get an award having been on our show. So that will be happening right. in June. So you'll you'll well, get a you'll get a quibbly. I've <laughs> never won anything, so that's you, really cool. <laughs> you will get your own quibbly handmade by you know 
by Brendan. Uh, but the whole team, yeah, well, I'm part of it, but you know, it's a whole team effort, so it's, you know, it's yeah, unique. no, I'm going to put that award right up. I'm in the closet right now. As that's you know. where it belongs. You're going to put it right up in the closet, and that's where it goes. That's exact. File it beneath something. Put you know, the weird thing is that. Go ahead, a... Brendan. Oh, sorry. Hmm? Go ahead, Greg. No, I was going to say, Jeremy, I, this isn't too personal, but what's with all the name changes? You've had like two name changes in your life. Is it too personal to talk about? I get it. No, it's just sort of silly. Was it showbiz? Yeah, and my name was Susan was Claire cooler. Davis, and I couldn't join Actors Equity to be in a play in New York. And then you were Kristen I, something, right? Kristen? No. Well, I never, said something like... Greg, you know, Greg, let her tell the story. She yeah, quit interrupting never, her for crying yeah, out loud. She asked the question. You asked the question. I like okay, that. Sorry, Maybe sorry. I should have picked that. Um, I tried to be Vestra Altair for about five minutes. That's a Somebody good one. Somebody said that sounded Ooh, like a stripper. That's cool, man. I <laughs> but I was going to be Randy Pickens, but the cab driver slammed on the brakes and said, get a new name on the way to the public theater. My brother wow. knew a really cool girl at the University of Michigan named Jeremy Tomlin, so I couldn't take her whole name, so I stole her first name. It was Raining, so I became Jeremy Rain. Then they said, how do you spell it? I said, I don't know. I'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then when I married Richard, I did become Jeremy Dreyfus just because our kids, you know, are named Dreyfus. Right. Yeah. But now I heard my daughter wants to change her name to Hawk. Emily Hawk. Rose Hawk. Hawk. <laughs> okay. Rain Hawk. You Is it Hawk, H O C K or H A W K? H A W K. Because H O C K would be one that you wouldn't expect. No, that would be a name. That's cool. It's Hawk. Well, I don't know. We're like a cool Bartholomew character. Uh, I'm Greg Hawk. Yeah. But Hawk. but your wife, your wife. I mean, your wife. Your wife. <laughs> your your, your, wife daughter, your daughter. Keep it, uh, keep it together, guys. I mean, she's in Idaho. We're in Portland. I think I'm having I a. I need a together. wife. I need a wife. I think I I'm having a, a mini stroke again. That's what's <laughs> happening. So, so your daughter. But your daughter is a very accomplished person as well. I mean, she's yes. like part of a, like a Harvard think tank of some kind or yeah, and, uh, she wrote a book that's out right now meme wars meme wars that sounds yeah, interesting meme wars. are it's you in it Amazon pick no oh it's a... so it's not and like Richard wrote a book and I'm gonna get it next week <laughs> well Amazon so you rich you and Richard driver still stay um, in communi communication oh okay gotcha uh, I mean we have three kids and two grandchildren so All right so we know so, each other. No, I, I, <laughs> That's good. I, I, good Richard, you know each Richard other. Dreyfus, I don't care. Mean Wars, <laughs> what is that all about? Do you... Don't tell my daughter. I haven't read it yet. Okay, I'll, I'll read it. I've got the book in where I was, but but I was freezing over there, remember? So you <laughs> oh, came into the closet. Uh, well, right. if she's interested in doing a book tour, um, she could certainly come on our show and promote her book. We'd be totally She has been okay doing a book tour. And then the one that you just saw, my son, he's uh -huh. on Dan Savage's show tomorrow. Dan Savage, oh. the sex guy? Yeah. No. Well, what about? What, what's this uh, thing on the Dan Savage show? What, what's the know? topic? Dan! Oh. <laughs> what's the topic of your show tomorrow? <laughs> Hot sauce that makes you gay? That's my favorite. That's my favorite part of the show, what, right there. What you guys are talking about? On your what podcast tomorrow? Ben, Ben, <laughs> come fix the internet. Wow, he can't talk about that. <laughs> Hot sauce. I love Dan Savage. Hot sauce. Dan Savage is a great human being. He's if a... this is the same Dan Savage, we're not sure. It could I'm be. Sure. It could be John Savage's long lost son, who no. she used to date. Oh. <laughs> His oh. real name is John Youngs. Oh, what's yeah. his name? Youngs, John Youngs. Youngs, like yeah, John Savage seems too cool a name for anyone to have. <laughs> Robin <laughs> Youngs, Savage. remember Robin from NPR? Who? Robin. Robin Youngs. Oh, Robin That's Youngs. That's his sister. She used to be. Oh. She had a radio show for a long time. And... I do kind of remember that name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And his sister Gail used to be married to Robert Duvall. Didn't know that, but wow. I don't think many people remember Robert Duvall anymore. <laughs> I met Robert Duvall once at well, uh, the he I, was think, a good I think everyone here remembers role. Robert Duvall. And he just came out with The Apostle and he directed. Did you ever see The Apostle? Uh, his movie, Robert Duvall directed a movie and starred in it. And 
I, I went up to him and you know, everyone else probably says, Oh, I now, now how did you me. wind up in a position where you could go up to Robert Duvall, Greg? Because I was at the Las Vegas, uh, what was it called? Cine Vegas. It was like a mini Sundance type thing. You know? Again, but how did you get close enough to be able to because talk? My to friend Why would they let that. you near him is the real my question. Friend works You're going to get us kicked off TikTok again, man. And he gave me like <laughs> Am I bullying room. again? He, he gave me a free hotel room. And like invited me and my girlfriend at the time to go to Cine Vegas, and we were just like have VIP passes, uh, passes to everything. We, we Cine Vegas, Cine Vegas is not to be confused with Cine Bun, which is a totally different. Sorry, <laughs> <Definitely. laughs> because if he was at Cine Bun accosting Robert Duvall, it I would be like a restraining I order. I might have loved Cine Bun <laughs> more than Cine Vegas, but I did meet like I, I met like. I, I saw like David Lynch, Takashi Miike. I mean, I saw it was great. So you went and harassed all of these famous people. Is no, what you're just Robert Duvall. He was just standing there at the after hours party, which had a band and like an f- open bar, and I was just this like, is, "This is in comedy called a shaggy dog story." We're just keeps going on and on. Whatever and on. it there, is, but there it is happened. some punchline which ends with, "And it's Robert Duvall kicked me out." No, no, no. It was. It's not much of a fun story, but I went up to him. And I know everyone tells them, like, oh, I loved you in Apocalypse Now, whatever. And I said, I really loved that uh, movie you directed. I mean, it was very small. It was like an indie film. And it was great. It was really good. It was about a Christian preacher in the South. So the movie was small, so you just, like, saw it on your watch or something? No, no, no. It was just a small movie, like an indie movie. Oh. Because Robert Duvall's not a... I would love director. So they use like eight millimeter film instead of like thirty two millimeter. Made a movie okay. and it was really good. It was actually like a weird. This is the film. dad joke portion of and the joke. Yeah, yeah, I know. This is just okay. This is not bad. So what's the upshot? Bad, put your jokes away. Point. Listen, who won the so game? I just went up to him and I said, <laughs> "Hey, man, I love the Apostle. That was a really good movie. I like. Yeah. I thought that would be like different than just saying, "Oh, I loved you in that movie." <laughs> Did yeah. you really start that conversation but, with "Hey, and man"? Then, and then he said, "And then he said, thanks." And that's no, the think, joke. No, he <laughs> basically just like looked at me and just like walked away. Like, <laughs> you're not worth talking to. <laughs> Fuck you. But I was a genuine uh, fan, and it wasn't hey. just like I was like, "Oh yeah, I liked you in uh, that movie." Like all his typical movies. So, what part of the story are you like leaving out? The part when you like licked his hand or something, or I would have anyway, given the chance if his hand came out. I'm, I'm kind of done with I really admire Robert questioning. Duvall. Can we move on? <laughs> I do really admire Robert Duvall. I think he's one of our finest actors. Okay, that's great. He'll be on <laughs> next week. <laughs> yeah, sure he will. <laughs> and then Will Smith will be on after that. It's going to be a whole cavalcade of. <laughs> and then people. Beyonce. Maybe Gaga. Sure. We do have a current guest on, though, Greg. Yes. I know. I I wasn't trying to take away from that. I'm just saying. That you met Robert Duvall once. (laughs) I I watched Last House on the Left when I was like 14. I rented it on video. You know, I met Sean Connery. I'm sure Brendan. I met Sean Connery. You know what Sean Connery said to me as I got close to him? Sean Connery said, fuck off. That's what Sean Connery said to me. But But did he say it with an accent? I gotta say, though, I, I, you know, I haven't seen it since 1970. It's 81, you know? I didn't get a chance to tell him he was my favorite James Bond. I saw your pictures (laughs) from the film. What is going on? I I saw your pictures from the film on IMDb, and I was like, you have, like, this proto-punk haircut that is insane. Did you make that haircut, or did they make you oh, wear that? Oh, you're, you're talking about me in the movie. Yeah, last time yeah eventually we're going to no, get back to talking to you, hair. it seems. Yeah. They dyed red, and every day they put them in hot curlers, and they ratted my hair up. And, yeah, and the really reason I stuck my head in the water in that one scene was I was sick of having my hair up like that. So for the when we're having that dinner scene with the family... And yeah. I'm drinking wine. My hair's straight. Thank God. But in right. the pictures on IMDb, you look like punk rock almost, even though it's three <laughs> years before punk rock even started. It's like, that's a crazy haircut. <laughs> like, that's I went home one time with the blood stuck on my face and the that costume, and I'm walking down East 91st Street where I lived, and my two roommates saw me, and they started screaming, it's Sadie. It was Halloween, so I thought it'd be perfect Halloween costume. Oh. And then, like Sadie, it's Sadie, and they went running. That's <laughs> Thursday. 
<laughs> it is actually. That's not an exaggeration. No. So Did... what I want to ask though, Jeremy, is I'm really uh, my sisters used to watch soap operas. Right. And I was always fascinated when somebody couldn't come in and the godlike voice would say, The part of blah 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 is paid by this today. Did that ever happen to you? Did you ever no. your nurse character? Did you never like <laughs> were you sick? You had the flu and they were like the part of nurse whatever. Nurse Rapunzel. Sam Tolliver. Yeah, nurse Sam Tolliver is played you? by this today. Played by Steve Bashimi. <laughs> <laughs> I, I jumped off a cliff for Search for Tomorrow. The star of Search for Tomorrow was supposed to be blind. So I was her stunt woman, and I fell off the cliff Oh! and went to the hospital and wound up having my back fused. She regained her eyesight. So that put a crimp in my the doctor work for a while because I was in the hospital for a long time. And... Uh, so yeah, they but Sam Tolliver probably just disappeared. But I did come back from that. You know, I this reminds me of um, an interview of yours that I was listening to, where you said that you auditioned to be in Young Frankenstein. Since we're in, it's October and it's a Hollywood theme, um, and I did want to kind of get into that a little bit because you didn't really get into details about I'm that a audition. I'm afraid to tell the story. I I don't know how to tell it without. I don't want to get sued or, you know. Well, luckily, no one watches our podcast. Yeah. <laughs> so all, you, this is how I promote it. This is how I promote the show. No one watches it, so you're safe. And that's what telling we Telling us anything we're you want to tell us. Fake lawyers. Or I'll if you want to what? use someone's name, just change it to like a McDonald's character. So like whoever, if it's Mel Brooks, just say the Hamburglar. You know, or the Hamburglar. or Cloris Leachman is Grimace, right? Or um, uh, uh, Marty F it. Marty yeah. Feldman is Mayor McCheese. We got so, it. We got it. We got it. <laughs> See, I can look at it now and think it's kind of funny what happened, but it wasn't funny at the time because I flew from New York to L.A. for that audition, and I was there for like four days to work with the Hamburglar. <laughs> I love this up. idea now, though. <laughs> <laughs> they put me up at the Beverly Hills Hotel up on the second floor. And it seems like he liked to hang out in the polo lounge and hold court. And he's very funny. And I was invited the first night I was there to hang out. Well, the Hamburglar's always funny. He's very quiet. funny. And yeah. he held court. And I dismissed myself and went to bed. And the next day, I worked with him on the part. And but when I got back to my hotel, he was once again at the polo lounge and they told me to go in there. So I did. And at a certain point, I said, good night. I was going to go to bed. And he said he would walk me. And I'm like, no, 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 <laughs> no I can find my way. I know where it is. He insisted on walking me to my room. Mm -hmm. And I just saw the whole thing crumble right then and there because I knew there was no way I was. If, if he thought he was coming into my room it wasn't gonna happen right so i i did say things like i would hate to call downstairs and i didn't want to cause a scene i just wanted to Go get to my bed. sleep right so he got his foot in the door and he got in the door and so i now don't know what to do so i had this this belt this blue belt with these studs so the hamburger's basically in there burgling right now Burgling well, he hasn't burgled room. yet. Oh, he's, he's, on, he's, a, he's It's an attempt at burgling. Okay. Burgling right. is on the mind. And but... I pulled out this belt and I said, I was going to like hit, like in the abductor's head I was going to hit him with the thing. I figured that I'd protect myself. And he got down on the ground and he goes, beat me. <laughs> beat me. <laughs> and I, I always knew the hamburger that. was like that. Uh, so we're talking about Mel left. Hamburger, burglar, right? But, I mean, now I think it's funny. I think that was so funny. I'm going to be, he walked up to me once years later and he goes, I feel like I know you. And I wanted to okay. say, yeah, beat me. <laughs> <laughs> you probably buried that memory, but not oh, not deep, deep enough. <laughs> it's in there yeah. somewhere. Wow. Really, I went home and I said, I didn't even do the screen test. I mean, that was like, you know, oh. So do you you, you took yourself out of the running, is what you're saying? Woman, yeah. Well, 
what character were you going to be? Were you- that girl. The Terry Gar girl. Oh, oh the Terry Star- Gar one. Oh, okay. Oh, Terry Gar. Okay. And that was when Terry Gar wasn't really well known, right? I think at that time. Was that I like one of her? Was very well known. Yeah. So yeah, I think that kind of like talk- propelled her into the spotlight. Yeah. So did the ham burglar visit her as well? I, 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 my mouth is mum. <laughs> I have no and idea. He did. I bet he tried to burgle some hamburgers. <laughs> I, I can only speak for myself. Right. Totally Got understood. it. Well, I that was. All court cases were like this. Where we don't <laughs> want to incriminate anyone. We're going to use McDonald's characters. <laughs> In a court of law. Like, so where was the grimace at the Jones? time? Where was the trial? Oh, yeah. Alex Jones is grimace. That's true. <laughs> oh, yeah, Alex Jones, he just got hit for $1 billion. Yes. For what? what? Yeah. For he's his lies to... about Sandy Hook. He's going to have to sell a lot of shakes. Class <laughs> action suit? Uh, yep. Defamation. I think what Alex Jones could do is he could like uh, scrape off pieces of his body and sell it like the Berlin Wall to his followers, and then he could get the money to uh, to pay for these damages. Or he could just sell like pollen health cures, like he does. Pollen? <laughs> yeah, whatever the fuck he Bee sells. Pollen. He sells all kinds of crazy <laughs> shit. I don't know. Yeah. I've like, never seen his show, so I don't know. What I would not sells, watch his a, show. It's, it's all about I, a I've been on his show. No. Yes, I remember this. You're, tell us about it, Greg. No, I know because Brendan's a libertarian. <laughs> well, no, no, so no, 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 no. But, but beyond us. that, beyond that, at the time, at the time, he this was before Alex Jones became who Alex Jones is today, the, yeah. the insane lunatic that he's become. He was a my way turned down lunatic. Uh, operating out of Austin on an AM radio station in Austin. And I was doing political work for various things. And I was interviewed on his show a couple of times. And he, you know, when I saw him later, I was like, wow, he, he's he gone. It's like method acting gone wrong. Like he went so into that character, he basically lost his mind. And then I, yeah. I've seen early video clips with him where he was friends with D- Doug Stanhope, that really cool comedian. They were like, he would have intro his shows and like he wasn't always a fucking psychotic no he wasn't (laughs) always yeah he was was just a kooky guy he was just like oh the fun loving crazy alex jones who's kind of nutty glenn beck was the same way i I don't know why we're into this conversation he became a total tool (laughs) anyway because we go off on tangents, that's why this is why this has happened. So, so I'm, glad, I'm glad we're in the Halloween setting now. Yeah, I, yeah, and I, I like realize that, that we, we should have started this way. We should have started with a little bit of a, a pumpkin I'm, thing I'm, going. Yeah, I, I think I think the selection of pictures suits the people well. You know, <laughs> what was it about the uh, the acting experience that caused you to stop being an actor, Jeremy? Not getting parts. Oh, well, that's, that makes yeah. sense. <laughs> Steven Spielberg and Richard called me a civilian. That's why. <laughs> they called you a civilian? This was, yeah. But that was after you left the business, wasn't it? Right. Okay. Right. So what caused you? Well, you said it's from not getting parts. <laughs> How, how's business? Well, it's great, except for these clients. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say, Last House on the Left has a lot more lasting power. So a lot of the movies both of those guys did. I mean, not Jaws or anything, but Richard, your ex-husband Richard Dreyfus. I mean, Goodbye Girl. Who watches? That? I love that movie. Well, he I was in too. Close Encounters of the Third Kind, it. Greg. But yeah, that was my favorite. That movie? Close Encounters. But people incredible. will watch Last House on the Left until we're dead. And that movie's in the. Yeah, but he's been in lots of other movies that will people people will still watch. Greg. What about Bob? I made him do that. Oh, did oh you, you made him do that one. I love yeah. that movie. That I is love a that really movie. good one. Greg is our Bob, is that, actually. Is that with Bill Murray? Yes. 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 <laughs> yeah, that's a good movie. It is. I'm, saying, I'm not movie. saying that Richard Dreyfus isn't great, but I'm saying last half to the left. What are you saying, Greg? I don't know. I'm I saying I just want him to. I just want him to get dressed. That's all. That's what his documentary was <laughs> showing with about. a shirt on. Like she was in a documentary about Last House on the Left, like in 2000 and whatever. She was actually in the movie, Greg, not just the I documentary. Know, but 20, 40, 30 years later, they made documentaries about this movie. It's oh my like a, gosh, a documentary? 
Who would well, have thought? It's it, it has earned the test of time. It's what about know. Wes is gone, David's gone, Freddie's gone. Yeah. It's hard. Well, there, well, you know, we're actually having Mark Scheffler on the show next week. So, uh, so the two of you are who was left from the movie. Yeah, because the girls we killed don't talk to us. <laughs> they don't. They don't like us. That's they never liked us. How did that happen? How did that well, take assist. a turn? We were the baddies, and they were frightened. They were scared to death of me. They were scared of David and Fred. They didn't want anything to we're do like with us. like method acting. So they were like You're... actually afraid of you guys yeah. as actors. Yeah. That's interesting. Did they think that you really wanted to kill them? You know, I had heard some story. I think it might have been that Mark was the one who, like, grabbed one of the actresses and held her over a cliff or something and threatened to drop her if she didn't learn her roles properly. Or if she that, didn't, if she didn't might, act. sounds like David. If somebody okay. did that, it might have been David. Okay. Because I right. read somewhere one of the, the actors did that to one of the actresses. It wasn't me. Okay, well that's good I was to know. Nice to them. That's good to know that you didn't hold some. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you didn't. Get your lines right. I don't have time. Yeah, I think it this. had to been one of them because the concept was that they weren't acting frightened enough, and this was what would cause them to be properly wow. frightened. Which is kind so, of extreme. A little too much method acting. He was like Strasburg. He was like a great acting teacher. It sounds like. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, Strasburg was known for doing that to people. Method. <laughs> like if there's a chainsaw involved in a movie where you'd cut off their arm he would put that chainsaw right through their arm to show them exactly <laughs> and then he'd sew it back on you think you know how this feels band-aids yeah. <laughs> so you need the proper amount of emotion for this scene and we're gonna make That's it happen a good performance believe me. getting very spooky <laughs> when the movie came out we were horrified i mean that they had a screening and as we were walking out a guy asked me for his money back. It's like, we didn't make any money. We, I made like $450 for that movie. They asked you uh, for, they asked you, the actress, yeah, for the their money asked, back from. Yeah, he goes, this is a horrible movie. I want my money back. And it's like, um, okay. Well, yeah. And then it, was it Roger Ebert was like, who, who made that movie, he, wasn't he? He, like, he, was, the he gave the, uh, this big review and it, like everything, the circumstances yeah. changed. So it. Wes Craven got this big career out of it. How come nobody else did? John Cunningham got a big career out of it. Nobody oh, else right. out of our movie. Marty Cove went on to do really well, but not. Oh, okay. I, it, I didn't realize he was in that. Well, he's in like Cobra Kai now, right? Yeah, he's he was the cop in, in Last House on the Left. Got it. Remember the remember the two dumb cops that kept bungling everything. I have a secret. I've never oh. seen the movie. You've never seen Last House on the Left? No, no Greg, but not. I have seen Close Encounters of the Third Kind and But you're Jones. my age and like you... So, I have read videos. Close Encounters. I've, I've seen all of them, although it's been a long time. I do yeah. remember the Bumbling Cop. It's been a long time, but I've seen them. I never really got into those movies. I didn't see I Spit on Your oh, Grave or The Hills that's Have that's Eyes or any of those things, you know. No, I didn't I really start watching horror movies until probably the early 80s or something. And I didn't... The, Maybe I don't hills, know. I, I don't have know. to admit that you got The Hills Have Eyes is a good one. That's okay, a good one. that's yeah. a good one. Well, I wasn't getting into the merits of them. I'm just saying that you know I didn't watch them. That that is all. Mm. Instead, I've watched. I, I think at the time I was watching like kung fu movies instead. You know. Did you watch oh. Down and Out in Beverly Hills? I did. That was with Nick Nolte, right? Yes. Nah. Richard. No, I've network. been a, I've actually been a fan of your ex-husband. I'm definitely a fan of your ex-husband. Um, I watched both the Stakeout movies. Oh, he was great in them. Yeah, I really enjoyed those. Um, I I liked his sensibility as an actor, you know. So. Um, I think he's a complete natural. I mean, it just comes completely naturally to him. Yeah, I mean, one of the you know from an advertising perspective, he has that great voice. Like he did the the Apple commercial and. And Honda, and I don't know why he hasn't done more. He has that totally... Like, you just trust what he says, or you yeah. feel it somehow. Like, when he narrated Stand By Me, that, uh, again, that movie is a fantastic movie. Do you know how movie. that happened? No. Oh, were, were you responsible for that one, too? No, but oh. Rob Reiner asked us to come watch a, a, a screening of it before it was released, finished. And we went, and we watched it, and at the end, Richard said to Rob, I think I could do the voiceover better. Oh. And so, bam, he did it. 
Wow. Nice. Was there a famous and person who did the voiceover before? There was somebody else that did it. Uh, not someone famous. It was it was Pee Wee Herman, Greg. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Richard, did it. <laughs> Richard did it. He, I think he said, I'll do it for nothing. I'll just do it. And he did wow. it. Wow. That's that's impressive. That's just doing it for the art. He did it for now. nothing? Well, I'm sure he got scale. Him. He probably got scale. Yeah. Wow. Probably didn't do it for enough. I I have a question regarding um, being around like famous people and you having like moved into that arena, having married Richard Dreyfus. What was the most surreal aspect of that for you? In other words, like what made you go, "Oh, I'm in a weird situation at this moment. What is happening in this moment? Whatever that we moment used, might be." We used to fly. We used to go everywhere with Steven Spielberg and Amy Irving. We went on vacations, went all over the place, and we flew on the Warner jet. And Emily was, our daughter was about, I don't know, maybe six, and we were on the Lorimar jet. And she asked for peanut, chocolate peanut M&Ms. And they said, we don't have candy on the Lorimar jet. And she goes, well, the Warner Brothers jet has candy. <laughs> and I thought, that we got to get out of here. We got to get. That, I, I can't. It's not, it's not reality, and this is wasn't our life. It was Stephen that could get the jet all the time, not us. And yeah. this is when and, uh, this is like before the word entitled became part of American vocabulary. Right. right. Well, the Warner Brothers jet. Was, and so wow. We I moved. We had a second house in Idaho, and the kids grew up here. Oh, what part of Idaho are you in? Sun Valley. Is that uh, northern or southern? Is that near Boise yes. or near like twin, um, twin something? It's closer to twin. It's like twin Falls. A, an hour north of twin. Yeah, we took a, a little road. Resort. The three of us took a road trip to Idaho about a month, two months ago to go visit somebody else who'd been on our podcast. So if we had known right. you before, yeah, you we probably would have stopped by and oh, or at sure. least gotten you to go to the same show that we went to. We went to a show. What was it called? It was 50 Shades of Gay. Right. Um, one of our... Uh, guests from back east was doing a show in idaho so we took a road trip out there and um it would have been good to have somebody else who did the want to see too. that show <laughs> yeah i mean who, who can who can say no to a gay variety show in downtown right. Boise? I, I would like right. to see that transvestite yeah. singers and comedy yeah that no, was good it was there was there was there you was know moments, it's kind of low budget hilarity there was yeah. moments that yeah. touched me there, was times <laughs> there were moments when you when you, you were touched. Did you touch me? I'm not sure, but actually, no. All three time. of us, all three of us were oh. there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh great. We all we all got the car. See, um, for the longest time, we were a bi-coastal podcast. Brendan, who's directly above you right now, was living in Florida, and he recently moved out here to Portland. I live in the outskirts, and Greg lives downtown Portland. Um, and so when he finally came out there, we were like, "Let's take a road trip." So we took a road trip to go see this uh, guest of ours, who's actually been quite fun his name is ike Avelli. he's he's based out of jersey but um are you in you ever... portland yeah we're mm -hmm. we're all in, in portland river. oregon now say again I, like, I had a house in hood river and john savage and i had a snake that got so big it lives at the portland zoo really the sna it's still there <laughs> yeah that's, that's an old feet long now now this is when you were dating john savage yeah, which would have been in the 70s yeah, that that's an old alive. snake I didn't know they lived that long. Snake. Snakes and turtles can live a long time. This is a really bit of like Florida thing humans? coming out. That's why those pythons that they release into the wild, they just exist forever. They could be yeah. 40, 50 years old. Wow. His name was Spencer Savage Snake, and his initials were... <laughs> Spencer Savage Snake. That's a good tongue twister, too. I remember yeah. that TV movie when I was a kid in the 70s. It was a movie called... That was that, the name of the movie. The snake was the uh, snake. the lead actor in that movie. No, no, it was right. about a guy who was almost like the fly before David Cronenberg. It was that like the fly, movie. but it was a snake. Yeah, he was <laughs> this guy who was turning into a snake, and he didn't uh, like it. No, it was very really? like, that. like crazy. But it was it was called. I, I feel like, like you're turning into a naked mole rat, Greg. Is what I think is. I want to wrap them up in that aluminum foil like it's a big potato. I have, have boxer shorts on, but I'm saying that was the name of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> the TV movie was called 
What was the I think that was like? Snakes on Airplanes or something. No, it was no. way before that. It was the early 70s. That was, was Samuel L. Jackson's movie. first movie. And it was about a guy who was turning first into movie. a snake. Yeah. And like his skin was molting like a snake. And yeah. it was, it was not, yeah, they do molt. They do. Yeah, it was not it's, a good thing. Greg is molted. Greg? That's why he's got no shirt on. Yeah, what happened to you? <laughs> Greg molted right before the episode, right before we got on the air. I'm molting right now on the bus. On air. <laughs> the skin is just like hanging outside of his apartment. I live in Multnomah County, so I molt. Molt Sonoma County? Multnomah County. Oh, molt. No, got it. Okay. I missed the pun. I apologize for that. It's a All right. So, <laughs> so we have definitely passed our halfway mark. And uh, normally at this stage, we have our cooking segment. So I don't know if you want to stick around for that or not but uh we're um it's always you know, jeremy it's never that it's always great. special <laughs> please stick around for the next half hour because you're delightful and i'm glad you're here oh thank you guys i have to but get my phone to back his like computer, five minutes so. of bad ben needs now. to get back on his computer because he's got it's like um, go to take a go to the bathroom or something you know, <laughs> But then come back. What and are you talking about? Our topic. Greg our is just being is. mean as always. That's, that, no, no, it's my cooking. Ask Greg is bad it's, too. I'm saying it's, it's the heat <laughs> in Portland where it got it's up to like what, it got 80 today. I don't know. <laughs> but I hope you stick around. I hope you tough it out. Well, we're going to find out because we're going to start the cooking segment right now. Here we go. At safe Mart. It's a safe Mart. Time to safe Mart and be safe. Safe Mart is a proud sponsor of Food is for Eating with Waspy Soda Pop. Today's special, Wasp Crackers. 12 ounces for $13.50. Come get some at Safe Mart. Be oh, safe. Oh, I love Wasp Crackers. Food is for eating. Food is for eating. Food is for eating with Waspy Soda Pop. Hey there, everybody, this is Waspy Soda Pop with another recipe for you. This one's going to take a little bit more work than normal, but I think it's going to be in your best interest to do this exactly, I mean exactly the way I present it to you. This is pepperoni and cheese scrambled eggs. You're going to love this, and if you don't, you'll still love it. First, you get one teaspoon of grapeseed oil, quarter pound of beef pepperoni, peeled and thinly sliced. Sometimes you can get it pre-sliced. It's entirely up to you. You buy whatever you want. Two tablespoons of unsalted butter. Six large eggs. Once again, chicken eggs, not ostrich eggs. That'll throw off the whole recipe. You want to get one small hill covered in gravel, half a cup of whole milk, one pair of hiking boots, some kosher salt and freshly ground pepper, one knapsack or backpack, three quarters of a cup of grated cheddar cheese, one scallion, white and light green parts only, thinly sliced on the bias. Now here are your directions. Place all of your ingredients and your cooking implements in your knapsack or backpack, depending upon which one you got, of course. At the bottom of your gravel covered hill, secure your nap back sack pack, then scramble up the hill using your hands and feet as necessary. Getting a good scramble on is your priority here. At the top of the hill, start a fire, then prepare for cooking by taking out your items from the back nap pack sack. Heat the grapeseed oil in a large nonstick skillet over medium high heat Add the pepperoni and fry it, turning it as needed, of course, till crisp around the edges. The pan is not what we're talking about here. It's the pepperoni you want to crisp around the edges. Make that exact, and that'll take about a minute. Transfer those to paper towels to drain. Pour off the fat. Wipe out the skillet. Now you want to melt the butter in the skillet over medium heat. Whisk the eggs and milk in a bowl. Add to the skillet and season with a half a teaspoon of salt and pepper to taste. Cook running a rubber spatula around the edges and along the bottom to prevent the eggs from sticking till almost set about two to three minutes sprinkle with the cheese pepperoni and scallion then cover it and remove from the heat to finish cooking about one more minute and that's how you make pepperoni and cheese scrambled eggs everyone always forgets the scrambling part i know you won't it's the best part this is waspy soda pop food is for eating bye okay well there you go well, Did I miss something? Was that actually edible? Or there's uh, gravel in it. Yeah, you know. It was. I mean, we lost Jeremy though. She's gone. Yeah. Her son oh, was like, "Give me fuck. back my computer." <laughs> it's Mom. like enough of this silliness. Those people are idiots, and you know you're a nice person, but I need my computer. I gotta, <laughs> I gotta surf porn or whatever. She's like, doing. she's like, I don't know why I was even on this show. No, I don't. 
I don't know why she was on the show either. She's a nice lady. She, she was, stories. and and has like an accomplished life. And for some reason, she might come back. Or it's it, possible. I, I told her to go to the bathroom, and we should take oh, a break. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm sure she. It's always good to tell people to leave Greg in the middle of the show, just no, ordering them to go. You, you drunk leave bastard. For a second, I said, please come back. I, I, I'm just saying that you know, he told her to leave. He did. That's I true. I did not tell her to leave. I said he did. You know, and that's what he does. He always does it because because he's self loathing, and that's why this happens. You know, is Greg self loathing? No, she's not, not coming back. Because I wanted her to come back. I mean, because yeah, she didn't. If, she didn't have to come back if she had life. stayed, though. You see. But see, the I point know, is, because... the thing is, we spent like five minutes before you arrived, and then another ten minutes after you arrived just trying to get her so she wasn't going <laughs> no that's true so she if she goes clickety click goodbye she ain't coming back <laughs> she ain't coming back you ain't that shopping cart All right. well brendan i hope you're ready jesus christ sure <laughs> Okay, so you should have your uh, the question from our listeners ready for Greg. He has an opinion, may not always be right. He's a real fake lawyer. He's old and he's white. Ask him a question, because he's a good egg for bogus advice. Ask Greg. Ask Greg. Ask Greg. Okay. We've asked, it's time to ask Greg a, a legal question so he can give his unqualified advice. His, his naked, oh. his naked advice. Sorry, we he should just raw advice. Enough question. Who cares? You can see my top of my shoulders. <laughs> Who cares? Uh, I don't know. Somebody cares. I somebody mean, cares somewhere. Somebody I, cares. I care about you being a steampunk guy and you're you, over 50. I don't uh -huh. say anything about it. Oh, I just no, did. you just did. I just did. It took me that long. Though. You know what? You know what? I'm trying here. You know what? If you shut up for a second, let me explain something. I think it's fine that you don't wear a shirt. You should do it every time because, and the reason I'm wearing these stupid things and whatever is because if we're on YouTube and it's just three white guys wearing t-shirts staring at each other, it doesn't look really interesting. You know there you I mean? go. Now we got interest. People see the top of my shoulders. They're like, whoa, these guys. Are I'm just <laughs> suggesting that you need to go a little harder on it. You need a little Burt Kreischer, like, just get up and just. Okay, look. I'm gonna he's go like a, what, a, a no, swastika on his forehead or something. I don't, well, I don't know about a swastika. I'm just saying if you're going to be naked, be naked. Oh, yeah. yeah we don't need to know that, actually. I'm naked. The you subtlety know. of his you nakedness. see. Is not enough. Like I don't know, it's, every time I see him now, when he's like that, I just think of the guy in one flew flew over the cuckoo's nest. That's just think, the like, image just, that always comes just, to mind. Just one Martini. pepperoni slice, just you know, <laughs> up like this. How many more clicks we'll get on YouTube if he shows a little boob? Well, you might get to if people make it. No, it's not Danny DeVito. Who you look like you look like the other guy from oh, the movie. Oh, that guy. But, but, but anyway, um, my show, show a nip. That was that was, uh, that was uh, Dan DeVito's character, and he, I loved how he was always just like, "Hit me, hit me, hit me, Jack, hit me." Please have that smile. <laughs> okay, well, Brendan. Yes. Do we have a question from our listeners for Greg to answer a legal question? Because we do. This is the Ask Greg segment. I'm no, sure I, we do have I, a I got question. It. I understand. Um, Bullshit. <laughs> So I do have a, um, a question. Uh, this comes to us from uh, one of our loyal listeners in uh, the Midwest. Oh, okay. Wichita? Dentists? I'm right. not sure. Doesn't say. No address. Just a P.O. box. Dear Greg, it's come to my attention that there are many factors of my current uh, business relationship that I need to consider. Um, I have some contractual issues relative to uh, where I'm defining people as employees or self-employed, and especially as this relates to um, post-pandemic or current pandemic, whatever you want to call it, where a lot of my employees are working from home, but some of them can't work from home. 
those that have to work from home or have to come in, how do I treat them differently? And does this affect their employee or self-employed status with me as a company? Um, I repair uh, air conditioning units in Illinois. Thanks. But um, thank you, Brenner, for giving me a total pile of shit to deal with. That's How did Brenner dullest... give you anything? He gave you a question. Yeah, sure. That's the dullest legal question I've ever heard. So it's um, a legitimate legal question. You sure do creatively I, with is, it. Is it legal? Know? What is he even talking about? Uh, some people don't want to work in the office. They want to work at home. Is I haven't heard. I didn't even hear a legal question there. Well, if you have a business then you have yeah. to define your employees as employees, which yeah. has certain ramifications, or they could be independent contractors. And it sounds to me like he's trying to suss out what the difference is between the two relative to the new working environment that exists now that uh, we're all buttoned down and working from home. That's what it sounded like to me. So you're asking a dishwasher what it's like to work from home. No, you're I'm a asking, fake lawyer, Greg. Yeah, but it's a dishwasher a, I'm who asking doesn't a fake lawyer. have the option to work from home. I would say that, mm -hmm. obviously, independent contractor status is businesses love that shit. They don't have to pay benefits. They're going to be like, yeah, he doesn't work for me, technically. I don't have to give him life, uh, health insurance, yeah, whatever. Right. So... I would imagine that they would be like, yeah, you're all independent contractors as far as I'm concerned if you don't show up to the office because that's good for them, their profits. And, you know, but... Uh, yeah, so what's the, really what's the advice you're giving? I would say, I, I don't know what to... Uh, yeah, pay them, don't give them benefits. Uh, there wasn't much there to work with. It was like well, the question I was the question I was a legal question. To be the honest. question is the question is um, he has two types of employees. Some that have to come into the office. You know, yeah. maybe they have to file papers in a filing cabinet. I don't know what the fuck. <laughs> and he has people that don't work in the office. Like if you go fix air conditioning units, you don't need to come to the office and then go out and, and they are them. independent contractors. Is that but what well the question is that, you know, does he does he include them as independent contractors and make them pay their own social security taxes and you know withholding and all that and put that burden on them, then forcing him to give them a slightly higher salary, of course, because now they have to absorb the burden of those taxes. Or should he bring them inside um, and just call them employees? That's kind of what I'm getting. Yeah, I mean, in a better world, he would just say, they're fucking employees. Sure, they don't work in uh -huh. the office. But it, this is America, and I'm sure that guy isn't going to opt for that. He's going to say, they're independent contractors. I don't have to give them health insurance. I have to give them well, no benefits. Greg, did you know that you could be a small business owner and not be required to provide your people with health insurance? Yeah. Okay. I do. Whether they're employees or. But I work for a small business owner. He has like two food trucks. And yeah, I does, does, he give you health, does he give you health benefits? Yeah, I fucking Kaiser Permanente. Well, and he's a good person in Portland. I know. That's, that's what I'm saying. Out. So I'm saying, like, yeah, of course, most pre people would opt to say, yeah, they're independent contractors, sure. Even though they work they? for me all the time. But your, but your boss didn't. Your boss chose to do the right thing. So why would all the other people except for your boss, did he come from heaven? Like, is he a special person? He's a pretty nice guy. I mean, it's pretty <laughs> fucking rare, a restaurant. I'm a dishwasher well, who gets okay. Kaiser Permanente insurance no, I, I, is paying $25 an hour to wash just dishes. Wait, to wash what? Yeah. What was that word you said before dishes, Greg? <laughs> I said, I said, wash bring, wishes? Bring, bring, swishes, I said. That's, that's, our, that's our new sponsor for next week. To wash <laughs> wash wishes. your wishes. Where we I'm take saying. the wishes that you wish you hadn't wished and we wash them away. I mean, All right, I hate, to, I hate to interrupt this excellent squabbling that is going on right now. But we have a client that we've 
thoroughly and completely ignored this How particular much, episode. It's six oh five. We're it's an hour. We're done. <laughs> Flying for next week. Oh, that's that's a different we, song. But I, I mean, literally, we had a we had a person come on and talk about Mel Brooks sexually harassing her. That's pretty cool. That's kind of newsworthy, actually. I think we like somehow got a legal, like a, not a legal, but a, a news a news moment right then, since that's the first time she said that publicly, as far as we know, about the Hamburglar providing a Me Too moment. We got a scoop. We got a scoop. I'm scoop. telling you. As it's known, but anyway, but you know, let's talk about horror movies. I, all I know is I, I really enjoy the best part about. Well, you know, we could save it for next week because we do have another actor from the Last House on the Left who's going to be with us next week, so we can just pretend like we never had a client this week. I well, can no, scrub a, that from the. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's a two-parter. It's a two-parter. We've never we've done that talked before. about. It. We've really talked about a cool. horror movie. We've talked about some horrible people in terms of uh, Manson and the Hamburglar. Uh, the Hamburglar. Yes. I don't know if he was horrible. If he was just you know whatever. He was just well, burgling hammer. He did request a beating, so there's that. That's pretty funny. If you get called out, <laughs> called out like that, that's a pretty go-to like disarm the whole situation. <laughs> if only Weinstein had done more of that, he probably would have been in so much trouble. As opposed Maybe. to just jerking it into a bush, you know. I don't know. I don't know tree. anything about that. <laughs> I thought that's what Louis C.K. did. Mm -mm. Oh no, no Weinstein. At one point, I forget which which actress called him out on it, but. They, he took her back into like the kitchen of some set and he like dropped his drawers and was like, hey. And she's like, no. And so he's like, oh, okay. So he just turned around and he just jerked it into a potted plant next to her. While, this kind of fits her. with our client because our client is life is horror and you're horrible. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, so it's like, that's kind of a horrible people. thing. So yeah, we just, we've touched on it. We can get into more detail next week about right. it. When we uh, have Mark Scheffler, who was a part of the uh, same family in Last House on the Left that did the bad stuff uh, did he in that movie. Did he plant, this guy? He did, actually. You, you could ask okay. him. It, it was a pitcher plant, Greg. That's what, uh, you know, he needed, he needed a proper receptacle for his fluids. Pitcher plant. What does Good that boy. mean? You don't know what a pitcher plant is? No. Oh well, that's your that's your homework for this week, Greg. Is look up pitcher plant on Google. Oh, pitcher, not picture. Yes, yeah, not a picture plant. A plant in a pitcher. <laughs> no, it's a plant owned by a pitcher. Like a pitcher, like like a so like a Jose baseball Canseco? pitcher. Exactly, it's it's a plant that he owns, or he looks like a plant. I get it. That's that's a different thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's a definitely a different thing. I met a plant, and he happened to be a pitcher, <laughs> but he wasn't a catcher, but he was a plant. <laughs> he was someone who should not have been there, but he was. What about a right fielder who <laughs> assaults you or does something creepy? Is that as bad as a pitcher doing something creepy? What? A right fielder or a left fielder or a Shortstop. A <laughs> shortstop, hey, that's hate speech right there. So it's just stop. It with is. The, with the short. They're not all stop. short, right? They're not all short. No. Stop. No. So just stop. No, sorry. Not okay. You need to do better, Greg. Yes. Greg. And on that Wait, note, on that note. Oh, oh sorry. What? What's Go ahead, Greg. Get it out of your system now. What do you got to say? Okay. So I work with lots of young people. I hang out with lots of young people. And somebody told me, that you can't say transvestite anymore. And yeah. I'm like, she was like, no, it's trans. And I was like, no, transvestite is a different thing. Like Ed Wood. Remember yeah. Ed Wood from the movie? Yes. He was a guy who was just like, I'm a man. I remember I Ed like Wood dressing from real up. life because he actually I just existed. like, I have a good feeling from dressing up as a woman, but I'm a fucking man. It's uh -huh. a different thing. And transvestite, it's like since Stonewall. 
were fighting for their rights. Wait, Tom why are we talking system. about this, Greg? I don't know. Well, this because is, you mentioned this is two. This is two shows in a row where he suddenly gets onto a whole. Just on is, some new is, rant of God for some is, reason. God God is you ter- mentioned God like is terrible. we're talking about. Like, I think Greg is. This is a cry for help from Greg. These last two episodes. Is. I think you're right, Brendan. You, I think he's help. finally coming to grips with the fact that he is like starting to identify as his cigarette. And that's what he wants to turn into. No, I'm and just saying that, do. like, I, I, of all the things, like, transvestites, is, it was never, like, a term of drool. Right, but I'm, why are you bringing it up? I'm here to support Because we were you, talking about terms that are, like, wrong. <laughs> what? 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 In my head, <laughs> what in my head we were. <laughs> <laughs> hey. We can, we can go back and look at the tape, but, but all I'm saying is... I don't know why I'm going over this. I, I, I thought we were talking about something that was wrong with it. Totally cool with I don't know what I'm talking about. All right, you need to shut up, Greg, because Brendan... Yes, the last word. Oh, yes. But I'm extra drunk, so I'm going to interject. You are. That's that's actually your nickname, extra drunk. No, this I'm extra drunk. This is the last word with Brendan Haggerty. And in brutality soon. Okay. <laughs> Brendan, right. you've got the last word. So um this just in from the just this just in kind of throwback to our generation discussion. Apparently, uh the emojis that you use in text conversations can possibly reveal that you're just an old geezer and you should just stop. Um, there's a consultant out of uh, England who's helping HR departments all across the country deal with this ageist, passive-aggressive uh, emoji work. Uh, one of the ones that is the most objectionable is thumbs up, uh, because it's deemed by Gen Z uh, as passive-aggressive. So first of all, fuck you, Gen Z. We never needed you, and this is just another reason why you're just worthless pieces of shit. The fact that you're going to take a symbol and turn it into a passive aggressive thing, uh, really? In fact, 40,000 of these idiot children were surveyed, and while 84% of the people said it was fine, 11 said yes, but they use it aggressively. So there's 10% of people out there are like fuck youing with thumbs up, and then six say they wouldn't do it because it's hurtful. So almost 20%. Have some issue with a thumbs up emoji. This is the population that is going to rule the world within a few years. So, uh, good luck and good night. They're already <laughs> my managers at my job. I, 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 I'm like old enough to be their parents, and they're my managers. And yeah, you are I, really drunk today, Greg. You're having trouble talking, man. No, I, I literally said, literally, I, I work at a job. Uh-huh. Where my managers are that generation who right. are like, oh, he gave me a thumbs up. What does that mean? Oh, is he? Oh, shit. oh. Is well, here's he the thing. Uh, this this is a real thing that's that's currently trending on Twitter. But some of the other ones that I thought you guys might think, I use thumbs up. I don't use it a lot, not for any reason. But thumbs up was number one. But some of the other ones are the red heart, the like love heart. The okay hand, that goes into other shit. The grimacing face, I'm like, that one? The poop emoji. The well, poop that's em- an obviously problematic emoji from the fr- What the fuck? Why did they make a poop emoji? It's chocolate What's that pudding. mean? Is it chocolate pudding or is it poop, Greg? No, that's it's an obviously poop, but it's a smiling poop. So it's On like- a, two times in a row, he said, obviously. Instead obviously. of obviously, it is not. No, obviously. obviously. That's how it's pronounced, Matt. It's obvious, obviously. <laughs> that, what is the poop emoji for? I've, I've actually sent that to friends and said, like, I'm not even sure what this means. Well, like, uh, do you, are you a piece of shit? It. Yeah, oh. I never have. <laughs> but that was that's you, it. You ever use a check mark? A check? No, that's an emoji. You sent a little check? I want to just get that check mark. 
Yeah, the yes, I told green. you I'm extra drunk, but I'm still. It's a little green check. No. So, anyways, that's that's so someone thing. from the Czech Republic has a handful of German money. So that's a bad thing to do a check mark to people mm-hmm. now. Yeah, a thumbs up is bad. Thumbs I'm not believing this last word from Brendan today, but it's okay. No, it's true. I, I, I'm, I, I'm I not dare surprised. you to go look on Twitter. You'll see Jim. Oh, you dare me, do you? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I just made it up. Dare me. Do you guys know that, like, literally 25 years ago, I was dating this girl? No, I didn't know it, that. Way oh. before the internet. Literally. Way before the lit, internet. Lit, lit, <laughs> before the internet, I... Mm-hmm. Like we were having problems, something was going amiss. Oh no! This and is going to the front of the episode. I'm yeah, because I didn't. You were because I problems. didn't. Um, uh, I texted her. No, no, I'm sorry. I actually called her. I left you a message. Her. Wait, wait. Did I you text her? Did message. you call her? I, I left a voice message saying, "Oh, message. baby, I'm sorry that this happened." Blah blah blah. And she was like, "You didn't text me because she was young, way younger than me." I was dating uh-huh. this girl who was like this is 10 Emily? years younger than me. This is Emily? And she was like, that was like an unforgivable thing. Like, Was this like, Emily? No, it was oh. way before Emily. It was oh, okay. like, I was like back in Tucson I, I, oh, okay. in the 80s. And I was dating this like... Wait, in the Islamic... 80s, she expected you to text her? Well, what's really was fascinating still, that was is that... Texting was not a thing in the 80s, Greg. It was the late on. 80s. They were cell phones. There was no texting no, in the 80s. No 80s. Late late 80s you've 80s lost texting. your your mind is gone. No late <laughs> no, 80s. There wasn't were. really Maybe texting. Sorry. There wasn't early texting. 90s. There wasn't texting. Honest to God, until probably mid to late 90s, where people were doing it on their phone. Yeah, it was seriously. I, okay, maybe the early 90s. I was dating this girl. Early 90s was, before maybe, the was, internet, Greg. <laughs> I mean, yes, it was definitely before the internet. Yes, definitely. It she was. was texting you. It was a page? It was text before on the a, internet. On a beeper? Did she page you? No, she it was wanted a beeper, to be paged, but there like was text dealer. on those early smartphones. Or no there weren't no, smartphones were back then. Cell phones. Cell phones. There weren't it's really. Text. Cell phones weren't really popular in the early 90s. I had a cell phone. I know, but in, I had one. I had a cell phone in 97 that was literally this big this wide and this thick it was like carrying like i mean the the <laughs> earliest cell phones of the late 80s were this big yeah yeah, you know, yeah they were yeah. gigantic and there, there was no that. text coming over those phones sorry it's early 90s i'm talking about you know, no early text. 90s same it's thing when was text what did text late mean? like late 90s early 2000s I know it's weird, but I actually do this that for a living and true. have done since like the early '90s, so I kind of know the progression of this shit. So, so you must just believe him, Greg. No, you should believe Matt. <laughs> when, when did Texas text start? Texas, Texas was a state. When, when did 1870? Texas start? It was after the Alamo. Yes, it's around 1870. I think he's no, right. No, when did text start? Texas. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm when did so... people text in Texas? Is your question? No, well, text. I was as in a Texas. Name? I You're was in like, Arizona. When did text start in Arizona. Technology. <laughs> oh, I'm glad this is still airing live. Text texting started in probably the late '90s. I would say '96, '97. And that was the rise of the BlackBerry phone before there was iPhones and tablets. Remember the iPhones. BlackBerry? I mean, I had a BlackBerry. I was a rich. And then there was well, also the, the Sidekick, which was like a slide up thing that had kind of a yeah. QWERTY keyboard. That was 97, 98. I guess that's when this was. So I was dating a woman in the late 90s. You were cutting. You were cutting. And I, I did not then. understand why my response to her was considered like break upable. She was like, "Oh my god, I can't believe you, you left me a phone message it instead wasn't, of texting me Greg, about this." Greg, I, I want you to hold on for to your chair. But it, that wasn't the reason she broke up with you. No, I get this. <laughs> yeah, dumb, but. I know this. Oh, I think it's because really that he thought there was texting then before it was invented, and that's no, why she saying, broke up with him. He was a time traveler. That's what she said. She, was <laughs> she said you were a time traveler? 
Yeah, she was. He was a time traveler. It was never going to work out. No, but that's why she said she broke up. That's with why he keeps missing him. his shirt because the shirt can't go back with him in time. Mm-hmm. No, it's hot. Fuck, it's eighty-one degrees. Today. It's like that teleporting guy in the boys, where you know he's got the cool skill to teleport, but he just arrives wherever he goes naked. That's what's happening. So he had to teleport from the 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 cool dishwasher job to here, and so of course he wants. <laughs> Close. I mean, what you know? <laughs> makes that makes sense to me. Of yeah. anything, it makes complete and utter sense. Fuck okay. your belittling, but let me just say, <laughs> that I'm not belittling anything. I love my, I love my dishwasher. I am a Steve the best job I've ever had myself. in my life, where I'm treated really well. But I want to say that whatever era this happened, there was texting and there was voice messages. And apparently, I thought voice messages would be more like personal and warm, like, "Hey, I'm actually calling you and letting you know that this is how uh-huh. I feel." Blah blah blah. And she was like, "Oh my god, none of my friends leave. you didn't text me, right?" And obviously, you know, she didn't like. Oh, is this I'm last ten-minute rant like, that he's on? I'm splicing it, it up, Matt, yeah, and I'm it's going to be a fun that. little beginning to the I'm episode when I finally edit it all. Brenda was right. She, I, I knew this at the time. I was like, oh, she just wants to it's dump just going. me. Yeah, she, she wants, wants to, to dump me. me. Dude, but it's okay. But you know what? She you wants what? to dump me, sure but she also Greg, wants to blame Greg, me. You're good it. enough. You're Greg, smart you're enough. enough. And you're gosh enough. darn it, people like you. You've got a no, good they job. Don't. You've got a good job with a good <laughs> employer who provides you with Kaiser Permanente. Permanente. Permanente, whatever. Who will be our sponsor <laughs> next week? You, you're doing good. You're all right. It's you're enough. We love you. Greg. You are enough. You're, you're enough. good enough, Greg. Fuck that. I know. Guy. I'm a piece of shit, but I'm just no, saying that girl was. This a piece story of shit. is about how a woman blamed this bullshit internet. No, not answer. I'm sorry. Uh, early cell phone technology. Whatever. And it was it's like okay, it was so man. obvious that she just didn't want to be with me, but she didn't want to be the bad guy. She want to okay. say. I had this whole list of things I was going to go I, over to talk I about horrible people you. for our client, but we just never I got to. I dump you, Greg. But it's like no, you fucked up because you. Yeah, but you know the thing voice is, is me really, texting. How, let's can, can we bring this back to <laughs> to the ending. The, the thumbs up emoji shouldn't be passive aggressive. That's no, how this started. That's a, that's a ridiculous thing. That's a bad thing now for 20% of Americans. And this, this, this is somehow racist. Yeah. I don't know how that happened. Well, that's, that's the anus. That's taking it yeah. in a, a different direction. Okay. That's the anus. All right. Well, this has been the law offices of Quibble, Squabble, and Bicker. And now we're kicked off TikTok. <laughs> well, that didn't go across TikTok, so they didn't see any of that part. Can I just oh, yeah, say all they that, see is. Like, can you just uh, say what, Greg? You've said enough. No, I need to say another thing because I'm really yeah. drunk. But <laughs> no. I cannot believe how hot that woman was at 74 years old. Your consultation with the law offices of Quiddle, Squabble, and Picker has ended. You may pay your retainer at www.qsblah.org. Please exit to the right of the water cooler and grab a candy from the front desk. We hope to see you again soon, but you need to leave now. I said leave. Why don't they ever listen? Get out. Get out.